Yesterday, a Saudi Air Force officer opened fire in a classroom at Naval Air Station Pensacola, where he was training to fly all the fighter jets that President Trump sold to Saudi Arabia. You remember Saudi Arabia, don't you? The nation that 15 out of the 19 9-11 hijackers were from? The nation that throws bloggers like Raif Badawi in prison and brutally murders journalists like Jamal Khashoggi? The nation where confessions are extracted through torture? The nation where crowds gather to watch public beheadings? The nation where African and Asian women are trafficked and sold as sex slaves? In short, the birthplace of Muhammad? Yeah, so an Air Force officer from that big old slice of Sharia pie was being trained by the U.S. military to fly the U.S. fighter jets that the U.S. government sold to America's new BFF in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia. Shortly before killing three and injuring several more in his attack, 2nd Lieutenant Mohammed Saeed al-Shamrani tweeted a message to the American people. Al-Shamrani's Twitter account has since been deleted, just as my YouTube account will eventually be deleted for daring to comment on these topics. But fortunately for us, the tweet was archived. Oh, American people, I'm not against you for just being American. I don't hate you because your freedoms. I hate you because every day you supporting, funding, and committing crimes not only against Muslims, but also humanity. I'm against evil, and America as a whole has turned into a nation of evil. What I see from America is the supporting of Israel, which is invasion of Muslim country. I see invasion of many countries by its troops. I see Guantanamo Bay. I see cruise missiles, cluster bombs, and UAV, unmanned aerial vehicles. So that's al-Shamrani's justification for his killing spree. Notice these additional remarks on the side. Unfortunately, we can't click on them to expand them because this is an archived picture of his Twitter page, but we can see that there are two sets of quotations. This part down here, the security is shared destiny, is from Osama bin Laden. Up here we have, what benefit is it to the American people to suffer for the sake of supporting Israel? Do you expect to transgress against others and yet be spared retribution? How many more body bags are American families willing to receive? For how long can the U.S. survive this war of attrition? These are direct quotes from Sheikh Anwar al-Awlaki's message to the American people. Here again we have, for how long can the U.S. survive this war of attrition? What benefit is it to the American people to suffer for the sake of supporting Israel? Do you expect to transgress against others and yet be spared retribution? How many more body bags are American families willing to receive? A little later we read, We are not against Americans for just being American. We are against evil and America as a whole has turned into a nation of evil, which is exactly what al-Shamrani said in his message to Americans. But notice what we have next. I, for one, was born in the U.S. I lived in the U.S. for 21 years. America was my home. I was a preacher of Islam involved in nonviolent Islamic activism. However, with the American invasion of Iraq, and continued U.S. aggression against Muslims, I could not reconcile between living in the U.S. and being a Muslim, and I eventually came to the conclusion that jihad against America is binding upon myself just as it is binding on every other able Muslim. Nadal Hassan was not recruited by Al-Qaeda. Nadal Hassan was recruited by American crimes, and this is what America refuses to admit. America refuses to admit that its foreign policies are the reason behind a man like Nadal Hassan, born and raised in the U.S., turning his guns against American soldiers. And the more crimes that America commits, the more Mujahideen will be recruited to fight against it. Who was Nadal Hassan? Major Nadal Malik Hassan was the American army officer who opened fire at Fort Hood military base in 2009, killing 13 people and injuring dozens more. Now let's put all of this together. 
In the 1980s, Osama bin Laden and his fellow jihadis in Afghanistan were funded by the United States. Bin Laden eventually used his popularity to form Al-Qaeda. Sheikh Anwar al-Awlaki was born in New Mexico. He was president of the Muslim Student Association at Colorado State University, where he earned a degree in civil engineering. He was the imam of the Denver Islamic Society. He was the imam of a mosque in San Diego. He was the Muslim chaplain at George Washington University. He was the imam at the Dar al-Hijra Mosque in Virginia. And he joined al-Qaeda and became its greatest recruiter. Al-Awlaki influenced Major Nadal Malik Hassan, who, again, opened fire at Fort Hood. Al-Awlaki then wrote his Message to the American People, where he cited Nadal Malik Hassan as an example of what a devout Muslim should do if given the opportunity. Second Lieutenant Mohammed Saeed al-Shamrani of the Saudi Air Force read al-Awlaki's Message to the American People and the story of Nadal Malik Hassan. Then he was invited to the United States of America to be trained by the U.S. military to fly the U.S. jets that were sold to Saudi Arabia. He saw an opportunity and, like Nadal Malik Hassan, opened fire at a military base. The only bright side here is that if 2nd Lieutenant Mohammed Saeed al-Shamrani had been just a little smarter, he might have decided to get creative with one of the jets he was learning to fly. So... We dodged a bullet on that one. Two questions I'd like you to answer in the comments section. First, there are peaceful Muslims and there are violent Muslims. Can you think of any way to spot the difference between the two before one of the violent Muslims goes on a killing spree? Second, Osama bin Laden, Anwar al-Awlaki, Nadal Malik Hassan, Mohammed Saeed al-Shamrani. Do you think our leaders have learned anything about the ideology we're dealing with? Or are they absolutely impervious to facts, evidence, and reality? Let me know what you think, and if you don't understand jihad yet, be sure to watch my videos, The Three Stages of Jihad and The Jihad Triangle. The only way out of this mess is an informed population of free people. So, get informed, inform others, and stay free.